Welcome to Commander Pop Culture, a place to gather magical information with some laughs, might I add. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. If you're here, then you want to build Commander Mustard. Well, hopefully I have a list for you. Uh, first off, I have one Planeswalker and that's Elspeth, a Sun's Champion. She's awesome in that you create three 1-1 one, one tokens with a plus one ability. That's like probably one of the best Planeswalkers ever printed. Take that one right there, she got to come. Oh yes, she's very nice. And it's very budget friendly at $1.30. <laughs> Her minus three is you destroy all creatures four or greater. Your emblem is creatures get plus two, plus two and flying. So if you get there, uh, I'm pretty sure that's game over. <laughs> that's a pretty potent emblem effect. Something I want to mention is that my creature count looks not the best, it's only 23, and there people will glance at my decks and then they'll be hating right out the gate because people expect, you know, 30 plus soldier synergy cards in the deck or 30 soldiers to be in your deck, but they don't bother to look at anything else beyond the creature count. And I assure you, I'm at 30 with just my instant sorceries and my planeswalkers, my enchantments and artifacts. So before you judge me too hard, uh, just look at those. I will satisfy, you know, that 30 plus count of soldiers in the deck. It's just a reoccurring thing I noticed because I post my, my videos and my lists on Reddit and like, that's always a gripe when I do tribal decks. And I guess you could say I'm just tired of like putting people's hate at rest and be like, just look at the rest of the list before you judge it too hard. Anyways, I went off on a separate tangent. I'm gonna keep on going. Akroma, the Visions of Ixidor. I love this card because Commander Mustard gives three keywords, gives Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. So effectively paired with Akroma, it gives your creatures plus three, plus three, which is a really significant um, Anthem effect. Colonel Mustard, for four mana, you could activate it, give your soldiers, whatever they attack, deals one damage. So it's like a weird form of evasion. In case you trample, is it enough? I would say I only do that if you have nothing else better to do, but who knows, maybe you need the bonus damage to close the game out, that ability's there. My decks I build on the channel, usually the cards are $5 or less, and I'm kind of busting that cap. If I do bust the cap, it's for a good reason. I think a three plus Anthem effect is worth it. The deck comes out to be a price of $118, and then so everything's more affordable to you to try out. And the cards are more easily accessible for you to get. Baird, whenever a creature control power greater than its base power enters the battlefield, you get to make a one one soldier token. So it's like a two for one that also keeps on giving beyond the first turn. Value Rush Banneric, cost reduction for soldiers. Bastion Protector, it's also a soldier that protects your commander. Blade Historian may not be a soldier, but- Prepare for trouble. Make it double. Giving your creatures double strike is a really scary effect. It's almost a crime not to include in your Boros decks. Boromir War in the Tower, because you're a creature strategy, protecting your board is incredibly important. Uh, you could sack this to give your stuff indestructible and it also counters cascade decks or things that are trying to cheat spells into play because you counter their spells. <laughs> I've had, I don't know how many games win in Commander because of effects like Boromir. It's because the game of Commander is just who can draw the most cards and who could play the most spells in a single turn. And usually that happens because people cast things for freaking free. And uh, I like countering that meta. Catapult Master, you get to tap Five untapped soldiers to remove a creature from the game. Excellent. Daru Warchief, it's an anthem effect and it's a cost reduction. And it affects itself, which is pretty wild. You don't see that often in uh, anthem effects. The Father of Faith, you give white pips for exceeding costs, which enables you to string multiple spells a turn. But that's not the best part. You get to make a 1 1 soldier every time you cast a white permanent spell. Field Marshal, Oh, this card brings back so many memories. When I first started playing Magic it was 10th edition, so it's been over a decade since I've been playing Magic. This also gives First Strike. It's not unilateral, it's a symmetrical effect, so it affects your opponent's soldiers as well. But, uh, because your deck's packed with so many soldiers, you're easily getting the greater benefit out of it. As a Marshal, if you attack with two other attack creatures, you get to make a 1-1 soldier with Lifelink, Hero of Bladehold. Albia is not a soldier, but it puts in two soldiers every time it attacks and gives Battle Cry. Pretty dope. Keep it with the cord. Hopefully you're the board that has more creatures in play, but should that ever happen you get more soldiers to catch up and it lets you get uh planes 
should you fall behind in lands. Mentor the Meek, this is a card advantage piece that's also a soldier. Palace Jailer, it's a removal piece that's also a soldier, and it's card advantage on end step. I love Monarchy. Precinct Captain, it's a soldier that puts more soldiers into play. Honestly, the soldiers that put soldiers into play, I would actually count these as like two soldiers, if, the, if that makes any sense. We need soldiers. Soldiers. <laughs> I just love them, and because your commander enables haste, it just makes these kinds of effects even more stronger. Rescue Retriever, the best part isn't the fact that you get to size up your entire board, it's the preventing damage to attacking soldiers you control, so it's like a Dolmen Gate for 5 mana. And you can do a combat trick, because it has flash, so people could be like, oh, I will effectively trade and or stuff out your board after I declare blocks. It's like, nah, I'll slam the rescue retriever kill all your stuff keep all of mine <laughs> you can make the argument that dolman gate's better that is due to mana efficiency i just can't include it because it's like a seven or eight dollar card same with iroas god of victory i would like to include that in here but again just slightly out of budget let's take a look at how much it's actually ten dollars way out of my budget let's look at iroas iroas is 15 i can't justify putting that in this deck and be under budget continue on reverend hoplite you get to put one one soldiers in play based on your devotion to white so that's a lot of soldiers by the time you get to five mana hopefully selfless spirit protects your board by sacking it to give everything indestructible sky knight vanguard puts a soldier into play every time it attacks Dahlia Heretic Cathar, this is more of a stacks piece. Whenever a creature or non-basic enters your opponent's side of the field, it comes in tapped. So it just makes it so you can continue to get in with your board. It's a very effective tempo piece that's also a soldier. Anthem effect for soldiers, and it's an anthem effect from your graveyard. Very appreciated. Veteran Armorsmith. I could have included Veteran Swordsmith. It's just not very mana efficient. Two mana investment for a stat increase is what I want. If it doesn't fulfill that, then it's just a little clunky in the deck. I managed to keep the CMC of this deck down to like two. And I'd like to keep it that way. If you want to include more Anthem effects, be my guest. I just pick the strongest ones you possibly can. Some of you might think plus one in toughness doesn't matter, but it just makes your board more resilient. It keeps your creature count high. I almost value this more than power. I want to keep my creatures. Captain's Call puts in three soldiers in the play. Um, cut a deal. Uh, it's just a fishing card advantage spell. I'm not going to talk a lot about these. I have 10 effects that either give you an impulse effect or draw you cards straight up. And that's just so your deck is functional. Uh, you can't have a deck without card advantage or removal and expect it to compete with people because you're gonna run out of cards or something's gonna be in play that breaks your deck. You shouldn't count on two other people to fix your problems for you. You should do that yourself. <laughs> Sometimes your opponents might not care and that reduces the number of people that are gonna be trying to blow up really bad permanents that prevent your game plan. Rally the Hornberg puts two 1-1 one -one bodies into play and they gain haste. What's nice is it gives all your creatures haste should your commander not be in play, this is a nice enabler for two friggin' mana. Timely reinforcements. This one is a little conditional because it cares about how many bodies your opponents have in play. If you get this in the early game, you'll probably pull it off pretty easily. In the mid to late game, it uh, could be a little dicey, but I think the risk is worth the mana investment. Three mana for three bodies is pretty darn good. Raise the alarm, puts two soldiers in play for two mana. Door of Destinies, it's a scaling anthem effect. Whenever you cast a soldier, you'll get to put a counter on this. And then for every counter that's on Door of Destinies, your creatures get increasing plus one plus one stats. For all the banner, you choose white every single time because no one cares about the whites. All your tokens are also white and it also taps for mana. So it's a nice dense rock. City on fire. This is one of my favorite mom cards. I think it's probably the best card from that set. It has Convoke. Uh, Convoke lets you tap down any number of creatures to reduce the cost of City on Fire, but it makes it so sources of you control deal triple damage to people. <laughs> so if this resolves and you get to keep it, it's probably game over. Connected Dots, this is a new card from Karlov Manor. Whenever a creature control attacks, you get to squirrel away top card for attacking creature. And then for two mana, you basically ditch your hand and cash in and put everything into your hand. This seems like a really fun card advantage card. I love Bomat Carrier, and this is just strictly better than Bomat, so. I'm giving it a try. Court Ardendale, it's a card advantage piece and a recursion piece. Even if you're not the monarch, you get to put in your hand instead. Not bad. Dark Seal Mutation, the neuter people's commanders. 
Flower and the White Tree, the Fisher and Anthem effect, same with Glory of Warfare, Grass of Fates, one of my all time favorite removal spells because it's uh, three for one for three mana. Rally the Ranks, you choose a creature type, creatures you control, the chosen type get plus one plus one. Now that I think about it, I should look into color anthems that are also two mana because your tokens are white. I should probably make some cuts and put those in here. I think I'm only missing on maybe one or two anthem effects that are efficiently costed. But between now and then, when I feature of this deck there might be some slight changes and it's going to be a while before i play this deck because commander mustard isn't going to be available on moto until the 28th of february so this will be no matter what the last deck share animosity one of the best anthems in this game gives you your creatures plus one plus oh for each creature that shares a creature type i.e. soldiers, you should swing out and just generate a sick amount of power. True Conviction, this is another top end spell that should win you the game. Gives your creatures double strike and lifelink. That's the deck. I'm not going to talk about lands. They're just there for fixing. There is some utility in there, but not really worth mentioning about. If you like the deck and you stayed this long, subscribe. I do a ton of deck techs. I do a ton of gameplay stuff, and I do other things like game theory and spoiler reviews. So if you like the sound of my own voice, <laughs> you can subscribe and catch more in the future. But I would like to show my appreciation to all my subscribers. I recently cracked 400. I think I'm at 406 by the time I've made this video. Might be even more because I just chain made all my deck techs, uh, especially the last three. I built Kylox, I built Pride of the Whole Clade, and I built Commander Mustard. So I'm just gonna release them over the weekend for all of you to enjoy. If I grow between Friday night and Monday morning, that just happens and I'm just excited. I'm almost at that milestone of 500 and then I can start monetizing the channel. I personally, I would just use that money to just go back into magic. I don't think I'll earn too much. I don't, I'm not that popular of a channel yet, but I am swinging for the fences. Someday I would like to compete with those on the mountaintops of the Command Zone and Talarian Community College and MTG Goldfish. If I'm ever there, it'll be nice to look back and see all the support I've gotten. And uh, I just, I want to say I'm very appreciative. So everyone take care now. Have a great night. Bye.